Hi, I'm Rebecca with Button Makers, and today I'm going to go over how to use our downloadable templates from buttonmakers.net in Photoshop to design and print out your pinback style buttons for campaigns or organizations or schools, stuff like that. So not like any other type of button. It's like a pinback style button, a badge. Um, so the first thing I did was download the 150 photoshop.zip file from buttonmakers.net. This is for a one and a half inch button. I'm going to extract this um, uh, zip file by right clicking and selecting extract here. If you're on a Mac, that's command click. Um, then I'm going to open these two files. You'll see this is the page file and this is the file for just the button itself. Um, and if you're doing a different size, you want to download the size that's applicable to, to you. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is go over the layers. If you don't see your layers, you want to select window layers. These are real important. The face line is the first one here. You want to leave that on while you're designing your button because it tells you where the graphic will get cut off. Um, this area right here with the perimeter text is actually like the side of the button, the perimeter of the button. And then this white area here just gets completely hidden behind the pin back. Um, so you want to leave this on and keep all of your design elements inside of the face line, but you want to make sure it is off when you are done and before you print. So right now it's on. Uh, these are your cut lines. This is where you want to cut your graphic uh, to put into the button machine. And we also have the, a cut line here for um, for cutting uh, columns, strips of paper to put through a graphic punch. Um, perimeter text is the text that would show up on the side of your button. This is really tiny and very difficult to read. So you don't want to go too wonky with the fonts here. You want to keep this real, real simple if you're using it at all. If you don't need to use it, just turn it off. Uh, I have a stroke on my text using the uh, effects, a layer effect. Uh, you can turn that on or off or change it if you want. Um, this is just so it shows up on a variety of different backgrounds. Uh, I'm going to just turn it off for this purpose of this, this tutorial. Um, but if you have questions about perimeter text, you feel free to write in. Um, I've already changed some of the type here, so <laughs> I've done this video a couple times now. Anyway, this normally says button makers down here. Get your supplies from button makers. Um, and I changed it to say something else. But so this is. OK. Yeah, get your supplies from button makers. We really appreciate it if you buy your button making supplies from us um, to show us some love for these free templates and videos and stuff. Um, but uh, if you need to change this text, basically you want to grab your text tool over here and highlight the layer that you want to uh, change and just click inside of here and start making changes. Um, so uh, Photoshop has a number of different ways that you can do rounded text. And my preferred method is the text along a path feature. So I've made circular paths here in the path palette. You can see that uh, for the face line, the bleed line, the cut line, the rounded text, all of it has paths. Um, you can modify these paths. Uh, so like, for example, if I wanted to make the tech, the rounded text top a little bit smaller or bring it in rather, um, it would highlight this and then select edit, uh, transform scale and holding my alt key down, it'll maintain, uh, it's where the center point there, uh, dragging in one of the corners. So you can make it smaller or bigger that way. You can also grab your type tool here and select the type and then change the font size, you know, that way. You can change the color right here. Um, you can also open up your character palette if you want to do some fancy stuff. Character, you know, you can make faux bold and do all kinds of fun stuff in Photoshop. <clears throat> with your type. Um, you can change the fonts uh, to whatever you want. And uh, if you want to move it around on the 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 um, the path here, you want to you would select the path select tool 
and mouse over it until it gets until the icon changes see so like i have my cursor it looks like this and then when i have this properly selected it changes to this little icon the little eye with the two little arrows and then you can drag it around to reposition it on the path uh, you can drag it to the inside of the path if you want um, i don't know why you would do that but <laughs> um all right so that's basically how to maneuver stuff around uh the background file here uh the background layer i have stopped it at the bleed line because laser printers do this funny thing where the toner buildup can actually cause slippage in the machine and it makes the mylar not crimp properly all the way around the button so it looks like a little mylar bubble on the side of your button that's actually because of the toner buildup um, and one of the workarounds, one of the ways you get around that problem is by leaving white paper between the bleed and the cut. And uh, it works. So I recommend that you set up your graphics that way. Um, unless, you know, you really don't want to, <laughs> then you're, you're welcome to, to drag your, your background all the way to the cut line if you want. Uh, if you're using an inkjet printer, for example, you might want to do that um, just to make it easier to see where to cut but uh but yeah if you're using a laser printer i recommend that you just stop your your um your background where this one is stopped so all right so i am gonna drag a picture into my button design so i'm just gonna click on this picture and you, with my move tool selected drag it in uh as you can see it's ginormous compared to the size of my tiny little one and a half inch button so i'm gonna make it a little smaller so i can see the the handles when I go to edit transform scale uh, and I'm going to hold my shift and alt keys down to maintain the center point here I'm just moving this around um, all right so that's maybe that's where I want it I don't know I'm gonna zoom back in a little bit I'm gonna turn off this icon in the button makers logo uh, and I'm gonna also grab let's see one of my paths here that one looks good and maybe I will and then I'm going to turn my path into a selection using uh, this button down here and I kind of don't want it's actually pretty perfect right there but it's cutting off a little bit of my um, text so I might go to select transform selection hold my shift and alt key down and drag it in just a little bit all right and now i'm going to put a layer mask on here all right and then i'm going to unlink the mask from the picture click on the picture part grab my move tool and oops uh, i have auto select layer selected so it selected my text instead of my picture so i turn that off then i click on my picture then i can drag it around inside my mask so it's perfect I want to change this background color to well let's see first of all I want to change my get supplies text to besties all right um, and I want to make this white so I'm gonna do that so I can see it and then I'm gonna change this background to black so I just click black on my foreground color and my paint bucket and I'm just gonna doop. and it kind of makes like a rough edge when you do that with the paint bucket it's not really the best way to do a background change however um, you're not really even gonna see that on your button so it kind of makes the designer in me a little cringe but <laughs> it's okay I'm just gonna leave it it's fine uh, you won't see that it gets cut off okay um so then i'm gonna um change this to say forever i'm gonna take off my little exclamation point all right okay all right so i'm pretty happy with this design now um this is a little close to the the, the face line so I might just nudge it down using my keyboard uh, the arrows on my keyboard with my move tool selected I can I can nudge things around using the keyboard arrows um, and then I would save this so I'll just go ahead and save it with all the layers intact and then I'm gonna 
click off the face line so that the face line doesn't, if you leave this on, it will print on your button. You will see it on your button and it'll drive me insane. So don't do that. Just turn this off. Okay. And then select edit, define pattern, click okay. And then come over to your page file. It's got this, these directions, the stuff about selecting edit, define pattern in here. Um, you can turn that part off that layer and with your background selected you just select edit fill with pattern so like you might come in here and it might say foreground color so you want to change that contents to say pattern and then this little drop down comes up with the custom pattern uh, options you just drop that down and go all the way to the bottom to find your pattern that you just made and click OK and then it changes uh, it fills the page with your pattern and now you have a perfect eight and a half by 11. Well, it's actually eight by 10 on this size, but that'll print perfectly on a eight on a letter size piece of paper. Um, brilliantly. This is a, very <laughs> you're done. You can save this now. Um, you can save it out as a PDF and take it to a print shop or you could just queue it right up to your printer and get started making buttons. Thanks so much for watching. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions.